In today's episode, we have Marsha Smart with us, and she's going to talk about her journey from taking her culinary education business into the online world. You will also get to hear how starting with a simple strategy for getting set up allowed her to validate her course ideas, the way that she has grown her email list to over 10,000 contacts, and how she diversifies her revenue stream with multiple options for people at all stages in her business. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Online Course Igniter podcast, where you'll hear from successful course creators and how they were able to turn their passion into a thriving online business empire. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the podcast today. We have Marsha Smart from Smart in the Kitchen, who is a culinary instructor and a cooking writer and an entrepreneur and just a plethora of titles of um, just awesomeness that she has uh, created along the way in her journey. And I'm very excited to have you here today, Marsha. How are you doing? Very good. Happy to be here. Yes, definitely. I'm excited for you to be here too. I can't wait to hear your story and uh, just talk about the the courses and the passions that you love to talk about and just kind of hear about how you got into this world and how you've created courses and has have built revenue and income from online business. Um, before we get into that, if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment and just give us a little bit of background about yourself and what you were doing before you got into the online space and then how how did you get to the online space? Sure. So I really honestly never thought I would be in this online world. Um, I worked after college in New York as a health writer for Parenting Magazine, and I've always loved food and cooking. So I kept wanting to get food writing assignments or work at magazines like Food and Wine and realized I needed to go to culinary school to do that. So I left New York and went back to California where I grew up and went to cooking school there. I did a six-month professional program and then, you know, returned to that world of magazines. And I was a food writer for Sunset Magazine, Cooking Light, and other magazines for years. But after cooking school, I always taught cooking on the side. I never realized how much I would love it. So at my school, we always had visiting chefs that would come do special classes, and I would always volunteer to assist those chefs because you learned so much that way. Um, and then I taught a six week basics course at my cooking school in the evenings and just realized how much I loved those moments of people who were nervous about cooking or sort of overthinking it or stressed them out. And then they had this experience cooking themselves and realized like a light bulb went off. They realized, okay, I can do this. This isn't stressful. It doesn't need to be complicated. So here I am over 20 years later, and I'm still teaching cooking classes just in a very different format. Awesome. Very cool. It's it's awesome to hear that there was a passion that you enjoyed, something that you love to do. You went out, you made it happen. And, you know, two decades later, you're still working on that. And that's um, very motivational and and exciting to hear. So you were teaching these courses. Now, when you said um, earlier that you had a a six weeks basic course, this was an in-person event that you were teaching? Yes. So that was in person. And for years, I've taught in-person cooking classes. And really in um, 2019, it was kind of the height of my in-person business. I taught in-person cooking retreats, in-person cooking classes several times a week for groups of friends, for birthday parties, for corporate groups. I would teach um, kind of general sign-up classes where people would show up and have a hands-on class. And my market is really busy and working moms who are you know, putting dinner on the table for their families. It needs to be quick and easy and pretty generally healthy. Um, And I'm trying to teach them how to do that in a way that makes sense for busy moms. So once COVID hit, I had never heard of Zoom before, had never taught an online class, 
had never heard of these people that I ended up really learning from during that time, like Amy Porterfield and Stu McLaren. Those people were strangers to me at that Mm -hmm. point, which seems so funny now because I've spent hours and hours of my life, probably almost a year at this point, listening to their (laughs) teachings. So once COVID hit and I have one part-time employee and things just started slowly dwindling in my bank account and I started to kind of panic and wonder if my business was over, if I would return to food writing, if I would ever be teaching you know, in-person classes again. And we were actually halfway through our six-week basics course at that point um, and had a group of students that had paid a lot of money to be a part of this course. So I had heard about Zoom and this was very early on in pandemic days. And so I started doing free classes on Zoom once a week and I would send out the invitation and the link to everyone on my list. And I have about 10,000 people or did at that point on my list. And the first hundred people to respond got a spot because I didn't have a big robust Zoom account at that point. These were all free classes. I just wanted to help my you know, community, my people. And we would talk about what to stock in your pantry, what to do with that once you had it, how to make really delicious, simple, comforting meals from home. So I ended up during this time taking Stu McLaren's course called Tribe, all about memberships. And I really wanted to take what I was already doing and make it a membership, make it more organized. And also I had to run my business. So I needed to see if there were people willing to support this online membership moving forward. Um, And I remember when I sent out that first email and thought no one would want to pay for it and started getting those emails back from people that, yes, sign me up for a monthly membership. And I remember just putting my head down on my desk and crying because it was such a relief that like there was kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. So that was my first foray into the online world. It was a membership. I run it through Kajabi. Um, I have about 300 members and we cook together monthly now on Zoom. And then I have a whole membership site with a video library of knife skills basics and, you know, pantry essentials and how to stock your kitchen with you know, recommended equipment. And it's been really, I love those people. It's been really amazing just having that income to rely on. And then in the midst of all of this, in the past couple of years, I've launched several courses. So I have three mini courses that are cooking classes. So I have a fearless fish class, which is a week long class about cooking fish. Um, I have a sheet pan supper class, which is all about easy, simple dinners where you're only cleaning one thing. Um, I do a lot of fun cocktail and appetizer classes in summer. And then my big course now is called the Smart Meal Plan Formula. And it's basically how I pull off dinner night after night after night. And it's a five-week course. It's only offered twice a year. And then when that course is over, I really invite those students to stay with me in my membership because it's it's always open for new members, but the people who get the most out of it are the people who've already sort of cooked with me in some capacity because they know that they're going to learn. They know they're going to find out about recipes that they will make again and again and again. So that's sort of the gist of everything. So I started out with just a blog called Smart in the Kitchen, which is on WordPress. And then two years ago, I added this second website called Smart in the Kitchen School, which is my online cooking school. Okay, awesome. Yeah, this is a uh, a really cool trajectory that you had. And um, I'm going to pick apart some of these pieces and go over them with you because I think you went over a couple things that are really intriguing. First of all, the niche. Um, I want to say <laughs> that this is a great niche because I know 
from hearing my wife talk about cooking for the family <laughs> that finding, you know, easy to prep and create uh, healthy meals uh, can be very uh, time consuming and stressful, um, especially the day in and day out of having to cook for the family and figure out what's everyone going to eat and what are we going to eat differently. So um, this is really cool. I enjoy this. So I'm going to make sure when I get off this podcast, I, I <laughs> go to your website and send it right to her and say, you need to go sign up for this class. You'll love it. <laughs> so the first thing that I noticed that I thought was really cool is that you um, started off kind of simply. Um, a lot of people, and, and you know, I, I talked to hundreds of course creators and I've had dozens on the podcast. And I know from experience myself and from others that a lot of people will have an idea and they'll go straight into the course creation process. They'll start, you know, mm -hmm. getting cameras and lights and and all these different things and the editing and putting together the curriculum and um, trying to put all this stuff together. But what I noticed about you that I thought was great and, and what I recommend for most people is you kind of started a little more simply. You started with the Zoom classes and you said, let's try to do some free Zoom classes, which is kind of a way of testing to see if there would be a market for this online. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And I can tell you that I learned so much from that. Like I looked back at recently at one of those first classes I taught on Zoom, which was, a, you know, pasta class. We made cacio pepe and we made um, another really simple pantry pasta. And I was cooking behind me at my stove using my computer as the camera in front of me. And I had no idea that every time I turned around, the audio was totally cutting out and people <laughs> had no idea what I was saying. <laughs> so it, I learned so much from that hands-on experience. And also, I think people were much more forgiving because of that. I was trying to provide something. I was sending them so many recipes, bonus recipes, things that might help them so they were all really appreciative of me sort of not knowing what I was doing initially. And I've just realized that there's nothing you can't Google <laughs> and ask a question. And I've, I've learned a lot that way. I signed up for anything I could that was free at first, just kind of trying to learn about teaching online and cameras and lighting. But I really didn't want to spend a lot of money investing in equipment, like you said, because I kept thinking this was temporary. So I can tell you now, this part of my business will never go away. Because for instance, last night I taught um, in September and January, I do these kitchen reboot seminars. So I'm trying to teach people what I really do in my kitchen to organize and refresh it for a new school year or for, you know, your new year's resolution. So in one of my kitchen reboot seminars, I asked everyone where they were tuning in from. And I was almost in tears <laughs> looking at all the responses. It was New York, Boston, DC, like rural Texas, California, Arkansas people, I had the chills looking at these responses popping up because for so long I kept sort of stewing over the fact that I wanted to reach more people. I would have friends reach out to me and say, Can you come to Boston and teach a cooking class? Can you come to New York? Because they wanted to do with their friends what I was teaching here in Houston, where I live. And it was just, I have three kids. It's not it wasn't feasible for me to be traveling all over the country teaching cooking classes. Um, the return on that investment was not there at that time. <laughs> um, so teaching online is a way for me to reach a lot more people, but it's also a very efficient use of my time because in an hour I can teach a cooking class with three to four quick and easy recipes and people always say, like, we're going to be here for forever. I can't believe we're going to get through all of these recipes. And then they realize how easy they are <laughs> because we're getting through them so quickly. And they can either cook along with me and ask questions in real time. I'll tell you, my online classes, when I originally developed those, 
I did, I thought that they would just be plug and play, like independent study. You, that people would watch them on their own. But I've realized that there's always some component of either community or outreach that's important for making your students successful in the course. So whether it's a private Facebook group or whether it's Q&A through Kajabi or emails or having like a Zoom kickoff, a couple Zoom check-ins or Q&As, I've realized that those are important to me because I don't want people to feel like I'm just selling this package course and then sink or swim. You're on your own. Either watch it or don't watch it. I really want them to feel successful because if they are successful in the course, they're much more likely to tell their sister or their mom or their neighbor, like, hey, I took this meal planning course and it totally changed my approach to cooking dinner. And then I might get another student. And I have a ton of word of mouth referrals like that. Yeah, it's it's super important that that community, that accountability building is is great um, with these types of products because you know you can find a lot of information online. Courses are great because they give you kind of a step by step order to follow. But when a course has that community aspect, the outreach, the uh, accountability into it, it just raises the value of that course so much more. And like you said, people are more intended to finish the course, see success, and like you said, tell others. So that's a really, really important aspect. And how great are online courses. I mean, my favorite (laughs) business model is digital products. And I've been talking about this for 10 years now. Um, The fact that you can create something and put it online and serve that to people is just so powerful. Like you said, you can reach more people. You can reach a global audience. It doesn't even have to be Mm -hmm. in the United States. You can be teaching people in uh, different countries. And it's such a good supplement to your business because now... It doesn't have to be the only thing in your business. It can be a part of your business. So you can go teach uh, maybe an in-person workshop to some people and then give them a digital course to review when they get home. So they can, you know, maybe they learn and saw you doing it firsthand, but maybe they didn't remember everything and they can go home and pull up your course and say, oh, okay, this is what she was talking about. I can rewind. I can, you know, look at these different aspects of this video and see how she was doing this with her hands. So um, it's really, really awesome. And I I love uh, talking to you about this. This is one of my favorite topics and I'm I'm glad we're speaking on this. (laughs) Um, The next point that I had written down here that I wanted to ask you about is... um, when you started promoting your courses in the beginning, you mentioned that you had 10,000 people already on your list. Now, this is going to be where it might um, be a little different for some people who are just starting out and growing that audience and growing that list. It sounds like you already had people on your list that you could start promoting to. So my question is, how did you get those people on your list? <laughs> it was a process. I started my list with a hundred people that I added that were friends. When I first started teaching cooking classes, I would send out an email to a bunch of friends and say, Hey, I have a class on Friday about, you know, what to serve for a dinner party. And so it's not stressful and you, whatever it was, eventually it got to be so many emails that I put them in a spreadsheet. And then I was like, I need a real email help with this list. So I went to MailChimp and then I launched a blog. So my blog was really a great way for me to grow my list because I post a free weekly meal plan every Sunday, every Saturday or Sunday. It's usually Sunday because it's really it's really what I'm planning to cook for my family for the week ahead. So that meal plan kind of gained momentum and people would sign up for my list to get the meal plan. And then I also post recipes, easy recipes on that blog. I'm so overwhelmed at the moment that I am backed up with (laughs) recipes I need to post and haven't been posting them very regularly. But the one thing I really do religiously is post that meal plan every week so people know they can use it. They can, you know, use it for inspiration. They can follow it 
you know, recipe by recipe if they want. So every time I also taught a cooking class, like I just did this here in Houston, I did an in-person event and taught a cooking class on grilling. And I put out a sheet of paper with a pen and tell people if they want to sign up for my newsletter, we will add them. So I get emails organically. Then once I started building this second site, this Kajabi site, my email grew so much faster with that site than it ever did on my WordPress site. And I think that's because of list builders. So what I originally did as list builders were these free little recipe eBooks. So I would put together one for the holidays that was like easy holiday appetizers and desserts. And you'd get 24 recipes that were simple with beautiful photographs and I've written mag, you know, recipes for magazines and newspapers for years. So I know how to write a recipe in a way that people can follow. So those really kind of took off. Then I added a quiz. Um, It's called What Kind of Cook Are You? And it's kind of literally when I first did it, I didn't even do it thinking it would be a list builder. I kind of just did it because I thought it was fun. And at the end of the quiz, I direct people to either certain recipes to my membership or just to my Kajabi site for free resources. So between these different list builders and free webinars that I host, so I've only had a Kajabi site for a year. And in that year, it surpassed my WordPress site by, I think, 2000. So I have on my Kajabi site, which was super organic to begin with. Like I just sent an email to all of my MailChimp people and said, Hey, I'm starting this membership. If you would like to sign up to learn more, or if you want to be on the list to hear when it launches. And then I, you know, they added themselves to my list. So I'm really surprised how quickly that Kajabi site has grown I think that's mostly because I did have a group to begin with that opted in. But also, I think the list builders and learning about list building and really paying attention to where your people, like where your ideal audience is spending time and going, you know, meeting them where they're at. Like my my people, my audience, they don't understand these marketing terms that I've learned in the last year. Like if I called, something a list builder, they would be like, what? They, they're predominantly not well versed in this online digital world. So like, for instance, someone asked me the other day, what's a digital course? Because I was selling, you know, this course I had created and I had to stop for a minute and realize the way I was explaining it wasn't making sense to my audience. So instead of calling it a digital course, I started calling it a five-week online class. And that made much more sense to them. (laughs) Um, But anyway, back to list building. It's just, it's constant. My one actual struggle now is I've had this list that I've marketed to and, you know, I've sold to for a long time now. I need to be careful that I'm reaching out and finding new people. Like I'm broadening my reach a little bit. And so that's kind of the next step for me. Are you struggling to create your first online course? Do you have an idea for a course topic, but don't know how to get started? It can be hard trying to figure out everything that goes into course creation. How do you outline your course? How do you set up the technology to create the content? How do you publish it so that you can begin helping others and making money immediately? We know it can be difficult for first-time course creators. That is why we have designed the Start Your First Course Challenge. Our goal is to help you get that online course published within a couple of weeks. That means that you can get your digital product to market without wasting a bunch of time. We will show you how with the easiest methods possible that we have learned and crafted over the years. 
you'll learn how to choose a topic, outline your course, script what you want to say, and then record the material. After that, you'll discover how to set up the platform and publish it, all with a simple system that's guaranteed to get you results fast. Beat your procrastination by taking action today. Go to startyourfirstcourse.com now to sign up. That's startyourfirstcourse.com. See you in the challenge. Now, I wanted to also ask you about the membership. Um, so from, from the free Zoom classes and from your list, you were able to start promoting this membership. And like you said, you had 300 uh, members in this membership. Um, what all does that membership entail? So what are they getting? And is this a monthly recurring price or is it a yearly recurring price? Or, or what is the structure of that membership? Okay, so it has changed a little bit over time. So when it first launched, I, before I had my Kajabi site totally built and knew how to use it, I offered a founding member price to 100 students. I didn't want to take more than a hundred students because of my zoom capability at that point. So the second I got a hundred members, I capped it until I could finish this Kajabi site. Originally, I only was charging month to month because I wasn't sure if I was going to continue with the membership. But when I launched Kajabi, I realized I loved the membership. I loved cooking with these people. I was developing real relationships with some of them and you know, getting to know them. And there are definitely some members naturally that are more involved than others. But once I launched the Kajabi site, I offered a discounted yearly membership and a monthly membership. I love it when people join for a year because you don't worry about their credit card number changing and having to reach out to them or remind them to update their card. I give them a I think originally when I first launched, I did a 10% discount to join for the year. Now I've realized that's so valuable to me that I give them a 20% discount if they join for the year. The benefit to joining month to month for them is they can cancel at any time. If you join for the year, I say you're in for the year, but I've refunded two people who reached out to me for, you know, different circumstances and didn't want to continue for the year. I'm pretty understanding because I know what my life has been <laughs> <laughs> like during 2020 and 2021, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm understanding. But so the membership includes some videos, a whole video library on the Kajabi site. So there's a separate whole knife skills course for home cooks that every member is gifted right away. I am going to start selling that course in an evergreen funnel. That's my on my list for um, you know, next to work on, but I haven't I haven't set up that funnel yet. So it's just basic knife skills for home cooks. There's like a dozen things on there that I teach them how to cut and chop more efficiently. And then I give them recipes that like pertain to that ingredient. So an onion tart or carrot soup or whatever it is. Besides that, I originally was having a videographer professionally film three recipe lessons per month. But I realized that my members valued the Zoom classes with me much more than they did those professionally filmed recipe videos. And those recipe videos were expensive to film. It's a crew of people that does, it's amazing. And they turn out so beautiful because there's awesome lighting and audio and <laughs> editing and music, but it just wasn't a big return on my investment because people weren't watching them, I noticed. So you can see in Kajabi, your analytics, like how far people have gone in the course and what they're watching. And I realized there was a very small percentage of people watching these videos that I had spent so much money on. <laughs> so now 
as luck would have it, <laughs> my videographer who um, owns a local production company in Houston, she is on maternity leave. So I told my members, I'm taking four months off of these videos and I'm going to reevaluate how, you know, if we're going to continue with them. And so we've continued that conversation. Every time I have a monthly Zoom class, um, someone will ask about it, ask when they're returning. But I've realized it's only 10% of students. I'm That's not a very scientific number, but it's a very small percentage <laughs> of students that seem to miss or care about those videos. So moving forward, my membership will be a monthly Zoom cooking class. I send we I teach three recipes in that Zoom class every month. Then I send three bonus recipes that are related to whatever we're cooking and talking about. Then I also share with them discounts on any other courses that I teach in my business. So if I'm teaching a one-off cooking class that you can sign up for online, my members usually always get a 50% discount on everything I teach. So I try to give them kind of little extras and perks and behind the scenes information on what's going on in my business so they feel included. And then there's also a private Facebook group and community that I might need some help with my Facebook group. <laughs> it, it had a bunch of activity early on and it sort of died lately. So we need to, I need to keep the conversation going there. Yeah. I, I think that's just the Facebook algorithm. <laughs> it just, yeah, it, yeah. it changes. Like it's just crazy. Sometimes it's going so good. And then other times it's a ghost town. I, I go through it too. Yes. Um, but that's really cool. So it also sounds like, okay, so you have your membership and I just want to make sure that I got this right. And then you mentioned that you have some mini courses like your fish course, your sheet pan course and et cetera. So those courses are standalone courses that people can just buy without having to be a member. Yes. So anyone can buy those and I market them on my WordPress blog. I'll market them on Instagram. I'll market them, you know, through my Kajabi list. And um, usually what I found works for those courses is I'll do four days in a row. I usually do it at, you know, midday, lunchtime, central time zone. So around 12 o'clock central. And it's an hour class. And then I share a recording with any student in that class. Then at the end of the week, I send them one last email with all of the recordings in one email, um, all of the recipes again. And then we, you know, I answer any questions by email all the time that people have. And then these are the courses that you were saying earlier, if someone is already a member in the membership side of it, that they would get a discount on? Yes, exactly. Or any of my larger courses. So my meal planning course that, you know, has a VIP level and then it has a watch on your own time, less expensive option that doesn't include Zoom classes, which interestingly enough, only one person joined at that level last time. Everyone else preferred the more expensive Zoom class level. So my members get 50% off of that VIP level and get to come to all the Zoom classes and be a part of it because I want them to feel like my membership's pretty inexpensive. My founding members joined at $20 a month. I'll never raise their the cost of their membership. Then the next sort of time I really pushed membership, I raised the price to $27 a month. And I told those people that I would never raise the price of their membership. It's always open for new members and I'll get people trickle in slowly. But when I do my next big push, I'm raising it to $29. But I really don't want to go above $30 a month for the membership. I want to keep it as a low cost item to kind of stick around and cook with me on the regular and be able to be a part of my community without a huge financial commitment. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, you know, memberships is all about following that churn rate and just hearing you talk about paying attention to your analytics. I'm sure you've got that sorted out of knowing 
where your price point's going to be, where people might not stay or drop off and trying to find that sweet spot. But um, I really enjoy your business model because it sounds like you've created multiple streams of revenue. So instead of just relying on a, a one course or maybe just on the membership, you have kind of different varieties that you can offer different people, a yearly subscription, a monthly subscription. You can buy individual courses. You have your five-week course. So it sounds like you're diversifying your business model. Um, and I think that that's just brilliant. That was something I learned the hard way during COVID that I had this one revenue stream that was in-person cooking classes. And when that went away, my revenue stream went away also. So I've also realized that those in-person cooking classes take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. It's like set up and shopping and making the recipe packets and cleaning up after the course, spending time with people. It's it's a big time and money investment. So I raised the prices for those now that we're doing we're doing some in-person events here and there, but my cost for ingredients has also gone up because of inflation. So the price of those I raised. So they're sort of my higher ticket experience. And then I want to always have a lower price point also so that there's ways for different income brackets or, you know, people who are wanting to learn about cooking to be able to experience my classes. Yeah, that's that's totally awesome because you're going to find that some people are at different stages in their life. Maybe they don't have a lot of money to invest right now and they're okay with, you know, doing a cheaper option. But then six months or a year down the road or two years down the road, they might say, look, I've been taking these courses from her. They're amazing. And I really want to take it to the next level. Let me invest into the higher price tier. So I think that's just totally cool. Um, I think you're doing some amazing stuff. And just in the next you know, couple years or five years, where would you like to see your business? That's so interesting because I was just having this conversation with my husband because <laughs> we were talking about these you know, he's learned a lot about online courses through, you know, what I've been talking about for the last couple of years. And I really would like to continue always teaching in this format. So in five years from now, I'd love to still be teaching online. I don't know if I'll have the same digital course offerings or if they will evolve over time, but it would give me the flexibility to be able to visit my kids in college at that point or take time off in summer to travel. That in-person event schedule is really grueling and ties you to one place. So I love that flexibility that digital Mm -hmm. courses provide. Yeah. And who knows, maybe in five years we'll be uh, doing courses virtual reality, or maybe you'll be a hologram standing in (laughs) someone's kitchen. (laughs) That sounds great. I'm all for it. (laughs) Well, very cool, Marsha. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. This has been amazing hearing your journey and all the great things that you're doing with your business. Hopefully this gives some other people uh, out there listening some really cool ideas that they can implement in their own courses and their own business. So if uh, people wanted to find out more about you and what you've got going, where can they do that online? Smartinthekitchenschool.com. And it has everything that we offer from quizzes and free guides and, and recipe packets to information about my membership. So I would love to answer any questions that your listeners have too. And they can find me at Smart in the Kitchen on Instagram. And I answer every DM myself. <laughs> Nice. Very cool. Well, I will make sure that I definitely, as always, post those links uh, in the show notes for today. And so just stick around till the end to get that link where you can go find those. And just thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate your wisdom. And I just hope that you keep having um, that continued success in the future. And yeah, we just, we thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today, Marsha. You can find out more about her and her business by visiting smartinthekitchen.com or you can get the show notes of this episode along with links and resources by visiting onlinecourseigniter.com forward slash 61. It's time to go grab some food.
See you all next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Online Course Igniter podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening so that you don't miss an episode. If you would like to learn more marketing strategies and how to sell your online course, then also check out our free community where we share tips, tricks, and tutorials at onlinecourseigniter.com forward slash community.